uh, topology optimization for designers uh, in the early part of this, this year. And typically, when you're using generative design, um, you know, there's a number of reasons why you may want to use generative design, maybe reducing weight, reducing uh, complexity of the assembly, um, reducing material usage. And you, we've got an example here, um, as you can see. I've got my original design here, which is made up of uh, a number of different components. Okay, and then I've got a, uh, an optimized part that we've got here, and, we, we, and we're in the next farm, and we're able to use now what we call, and you'll see a little bit more about this tomorrow, multiple display parts. So you can have multiple parts loaded at the same time and literally able, be able to flick between each individual one. So you can have as many parts open as you want and literally just go between the different parts. And you'll also notice that things like the navigators change depending on which is the active window. Um, so what we've got here on the topology uh, optimization, we've got a, a design space, if you like. This, this is it for like the constraint that the part needs to be within. And then I've got various other uh, key components, if you like. So these are some of the flanged areas that I want to keep and I want to make sure that's involved in my topology optimization. So can, after running the optimization, then we get... we get this. So this is the shape that's developed directly from that optimized body. How long did that take? That took about two minutes in, in actual computing time. Okay. Yeah. On your laptop? Yeah. So what I might want to do then is to be talking about convergent modeling. So this is just a plain facet. So I'm going to create as a convergent body. And now there's other things that we can do with this part. Um, we can take a look at, you know, there may be certain areas of the model that we didn't include in the, uh, uh, didn't include in the, uh, in the optimization. So what I may want to do is to take a look at some other features and add them in here. So working directly on, on a facet body. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'm going to just use and select some faces from here. So I'm going to select that face, that face, these faces here and the underneath face. And I'm literally going to drag them and move them into the other window. So once I've got them there, what can we do? Well, remember, we're working on facet geometry. But I may, you know, I may want to include some of the fixing holes. Yeah, so again, I can use this, just a normal NX hole feature, and add that now to my optimized design. So I'm using facet geometry, but then I'm creating physical NX features directly on my facet body, and they're in, maintained in the history. So adding one hole in materialize would take you about two hours because you'd have to move that back and forth between solids and facets. You see that it was just copied from the original solid geometry onto the facet geometry, and then the solid operators worked. There was no new commands. 